at last. Welcome, video. As you may have guessed, I am... My doppelganger. Morpheus. I imagine now you're feeling a bit like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole of Python for years, from data science to data engineering and machine learning, and even web application in API. It's eating you. You could say that. You feel you're not in control of your code before it gets executed. Python served you well, and it's still you. And you don't know what the problem is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you. Nah. Are you talking about rest? Do you want to know what it is? You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe that Python will solve all your software engineering problems. You take the red pills and you stay in rest wonderland. And I show you how deep the power checker goes. Wait a minute. Did you just take both pills? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Why not? Here we go, another video that compares apples and knowledge. I know that the best programming language is the one that fits the best your use case. Okay. But I'm not here to talk about Python versus Rust. I'm here to talk about Python with Rust and why this is a big thing, especially for the data ecosystem. So let's get into it. But why? 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 Rest. Well, first, the general popularity. I guess you may have heard already, unless you're living in a cave, but according to the Stack Overflow study, Rust has been killing it. I mean, the most loved programming language for seven years in a row. That's a lot of love, even myself. I'm not sure I can commit that long. And if you look at Google Trends, you also see a steady growth of Rust, well, a general Python fatigue. But that's not all. Another big news is that Rust is gonna be officially the second language in the Linux kernel, and that will gain a lot of traction. But that's not all. Meta, in August this year, announced for CLI tool, we recommend Rust. This is a new recommendation for this year. And having big tech company embracing Rust is a strong signal of mainstream adoption. And on the other side, we have Google writing an operating system in Rust called Kata OS. And now it's so so this on Twitter from the CTO of, of Azure. Speaking of language, it's time to all starting any new project in C, C++ and use Rust for those scenarios. I mean, why are you not already stopping this video and running Rust? <coughs> <coughs> One sec. <sighs> that was a lot. And by the way, while you are next to this post button, you know the subscribe button is just next to it, so please. It's free. So okay, it's popular, but why? The second point is performance and low memory footprint. It's not a big surprise, Python can be slow. Yeah, 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 I know. Don't talk to me about Python 3.11. We are talking about a different speed. And even if you don't really feel it on your day-to-day -day task in Python, Rust is just at another level. It's blazingly fast. And the reason for that is that it's compiled into machine code. No virtual machine, no interpreter sitting between your code and the computer. And in our cloud computing era, this footprint is directly impacting your costs, but also the electricity and therefore the impact on the environment. And about that topic, Newstack revealed in a study which programming language consumed the least electricity. And you guess it, Rust is at the top of that list, while Python <coughs> is at the very bottom. So if Rust is a compiled programming language, strongly typed, and system checks are done at compilation time, meaning pre-run time. So that avoid problem later on. And finally, the third point really nice about Rust, it's the entire operability with other programming language. Rust make it easy to integrate and communicate with other language through a so-called FFI, which stands for for range function interface. So function calls between Rust and C has the same performance than C function calls. Okay, so why Python? Why, Mr. Anderson? Why? Why do you persist? So Python is a really big ecosystem. It's the most easy to learn and use. It's mature and has a great and big community, and there is hundreds of Python's library and frameworks. And finally, in the data ecosystem, Python is everywhere. It's heavily used in ETLs, analytics, data science, machine learning, yada yada. So the Python language is the most accessible programming language out there because it has a simplified syntax, not complicated, which gives more emphasis on natural language. But coming back to data, there is something interesting. Everybody thinks that Python is really popular in data, but it's actually 
all the C extensions that sleep within the Python package that are popular. So this dependency is pretty big. And I'm not the only one saying that. I mean, Gidov and Rustom in a recent podcast mentioned this. Part of the Python ecosystem that is heavily based on C extensions. And that is like the entire machine learning, data science, scientific Python world is all based on C extensions for Python. And if you don't know who is Guido, it's not a big deal. Just the creators of Python. So why both? By now, maybe you have put the pieces together. But why if you could rewrite some part of the Python core library in Rust, make it blazingly fast, but still use Python as a main programming language. That's basically combining the best of two words, right? Because the learning curve of Rust is really, really hard. Some type of user of Python today will never move to such a programming language. I mean, go ask a data analyst to write some simple data pipeline in Rust. The ecosystem and the community of Python and its legacy is huge. It's not going anywhere soon. So the integration possibility of Rust within Python is really amazing. And guess what? It's already happening. PythonTick, a big Python library, also used within FastAPI, the biggest API framework in Python, has some Rust in it now. And there is an interesting podcast about the PythonTick rewrite in Rust. I'll refer in the link in the description. Delta Lake, the file format for AC transaction, has a Rust equivalent and it's gaining a lot of traction. Modin makes your Panda data frame on steroids using Rust by changing just one line of calls in your import. So this trend is already happening and even if you stick with Python, you're gonna see some Python library written in Rust, I'm 100% sure. So why learn Rust as a Python developer? Well, if Python is your first and main programming language, Chances are that you tend to do everything in Python. And if you think as a software engineer, there is different programming language for different use cases. And now coming back to data engineering, now here is an interesting thoughts of Danny Lee from Databricks during one of his podcasts. As somebody like yourself and myself, like who are come from database backgrounds, we're, we're actually talking about Rust. And so what's interesting, and I, I th I've used this phrase from Dave Mariani, I, I wanna attribute it to the right person, by the way, <laughs> is that we're over the last 10 years or so, uh, we've seen this convergence of data engineering and software engineering. Like it's not never gonna be always the same, but the point is that, they're, that we're starting to apply software engineering principles directly into data engineering. So considering this, the Rust as a second language for backend and system, and that plays well with your first programming language, Python is a really future-proof choice. All right, I'll mention some resources to learn Rust if you're interested in the description, basically in two categories, either blog or book or YouTube channel. But basically, I'm a big fan of Let's Get Rusty, No Boiler Plate, and of course the Primagen, which is doing live session in Rust. That's it for this video. Hope you understand the value of Python with Rust, especially as a Python developer, and why this is probably a big trend for next year. Wait, you're still there. You need my deep voice, right? Just go learn Rust.